Hey, what up, everybody? Happy Hard to Kill Day. My deepest apologies. I did record this last night, or at least I thought I did, and the recording did not work. I went to bed. I woke up to a video of silence. So I, I do apologize because it is, it is it's not the first thing that the first time that's happened for me on the channel, and it is unprofessional when I do that. I I crash every Friday. It does not matter how much I did work or didn't work during the week. Uh, this was a long week for me, but every Friday I crash. It just, it's clockwork. And um, it was kind of no different last night. I recorded it very tired and just didn't, didn't double check myself. So I apologize. I'm going to run into my predictions here. And then I've got another podcast I'll be doing uh, that releasing just a little bit later. Road to TNA with just my overall general thoughts. And I will be in attendance at Hard to Kill tonight, so I will not be live streaming directly after the show. But but depending on the time I get home, I may do it. If not, it might be in the morning. So I know that's not really ideal because people do like to listen to reviews right after the show. But uh, it just all depends on traffic and all that stuff. I don't live far from the venue. Don't get me wrong, but um, doesn't mean there might not be a little bit of a... A little, little bit of a jam with the traffic last uh, at night getting out of there and all that. So let's get into this. And I'm going to try to knock these out a lot quicker than I did it last night. Not that you would know. Crazy Steve is challenging for the prestigious, fabulous digital media championship. Tommy Dreamer is the current champion. The belt is gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. I don't expect Crazy Steve to win this match. I know that most people want him to. And trust me, Tommy Dreamer, <laughs> I heard on Busted Open the other day, he's he's very aware of people's outrage that he's a champion. Very aware. I don't think Steve is the person to beat Tommy Dreamer. I don't think he's the one that he's putting over. <laughs> and um, I just don't know if that, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if this title works for him. But I don't, I don't, I don't see uh, Steve winning. I feel like in these pre-shows, because we're getting into the countdown of Hard to Kill here, which is probably going to be the best countdown in TNA history, considering a couple of these matches are main card worthy. Usually, baby faces win on the pre-show. I'm not saying 100% of the time, but usually. So, I, and and I also don't think that every title is going to change hands. The majority of them will. I don't think they all will. And this is one that I think stays with Tommy Dreamer. I truly do feel, and I'm not saying this in a sarcastic way, that that TNA finds him to be a draw. Um, that he gets YouTube clicks, which they love. So I don't think Crazy Steve is going to be a champion. Kenny King was an amazing champion, and he dropped the, the belt to, to Tommy. So... This is no disqualification. This was the funny thing is this is one of the matches that have an actual storyline on this whole thing, if not the only one. But we can we kind of forget because we had two months of you know best of TNA nine and and all that. We didn't get fresh original content, but this had a story and and you know they just due to the way they did television the last two months, you know they literally stuck a fork in this uh this storyline so it's been a weird story because people expected steve to win last time and i don't think the dq got over with the fans because they don't want to continue to see this but um even though steve's doing good work right now i do not see him winning i see tommy dreamer retaining so, what's next steve macklin and rich swan my two favorite wrestlers in the company wrestling on the countdown. I'll be happy either way. Doesn't matter who wins this match. I will be happy with it. What I want to keep an eye on though, is what Steve Macklin's status in the company. I don't mean his contractual status. I mean, after Deanna left and Deanna took all these L's on the way out the door. And I feel like Steve Macklin dropped the world title around the time it was rumored that she probably wasn't coming back. 
Now, Scott the headset does not strike me as someone who holds a grudge. And, uh, you know, like Vince McMahon will bury the spouse on TV, right? I wouldn't be surprised if Tony Khan did the same. Scott the Cuck does not strike me as that type of person. So I I don't think we're going to get like this uh, this run of Steve Macklin losses. But who knows? Because we got uh, Deanna Perrazzo. I think someone posted her 2023 record on Twitter the other day. It was like 16 and 14. Like just a fucking pussy hair over 500. So it, it's interesting because this match like means nothing. But I shouldn't say it means nothing. It's random. But Steve Macklin will benefit more from a win than Rich Swan. So if, if Swan wins this thing, I think it's going to let you know what Macklin's status is with the, with the company. Because I think Rich Swan, I don't want him to, but I think he's going to depart this year. That's my gut instinct. I shouldn't say this year because I don't know his contract, but I, I think he is not staying once, uh, once that runs up. But I'm going to go with Steve Macklin winning this thing. And then we're getting a... A countdown, Eddie Edwards, a countdown, excuse me, a tag team match, Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers versus Eric Young and Frankie Kazarian. Normally, I would say Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers will win this thing because they're kind of associated with Moose and you want to keep this group strong, but that's not the booking that we're used to, right? Like when they're stables, it's usually like the leader is strong and the and the the lackeys, and they're not really an official stable yet, but the lackeys don't win, you know. OVE wasn't booked strongly. Honor No More wasn't. You know, the design really wasn't. You know, you can you can sit here and and lift list them all. So, as much as I would just love to see these guys like as a unit just be just be booked strongly, like where you just cannot get past these guys, that's not what I expect. Also, because it's a TNA themed show. And it's a countdown show. Eh, it kind of seems like an Eric Young, Frankie Kazarian win. So that's what I'm going with. PCO and everyone's favorite, uh, most look forward to anticipated match is taking on Dirty Dango. So uh, Mike Gilbert brought this up on the Mike and JD show, and I very much agree with it. And I think a lot of you probably will <laughs> after hearing this. I don't think there's a match here. They might wrestle for a couple minutes. But this is, I, I think, especially if this is later in the card, I think this is an opportunity that, for them to debut someone or have some kind of surprise, you know, where they try to take out PCO. You know, I mean, it's the same story with PCO all the time. But that's kind of what I see happening here. I don't think there's a match. I don't think we're getting an eight-minute PCO versus Dango match. That just doesn't make sense on this whole card. I mean, nobody, and I mean nobody, with the exception of the people in the, the match, wanted to see this. Like, no one, and PCO's over too. But the reason was, you know, if this was on an episode of Impact, I don't think people would care. But the reason was, this was before Impact was doing this great social media campaign for Hard to Kill. And we were sitting here playing with our dicks, like, where, where's the announcements? Where's news? Give us something to seek our, sink our teeth into. And okay, here you go, PCO versus Dango. And people were fucking pissed. So I don't think there's a match here. I think it's a no contest. And they're going to use the opportunity to bring someone in. Much like, this wasn't a no contest, but much like a few years ago, I think it was Rebellion, Kira Hogan versus Taya Valkyrie, real random match. And they used that for Tessa Blanchard's debut. And it was kind of funny the people on social media saying the announcers were completely ignoring the action in the ring. Yes, because it was a throwaway bullshit match. Kara Hogan was not over at the time. It was a throwaway match that they put together for the sake of debuting Tessa Blanchard. So I see something very similar happening here. So I'm actually not choosing a winner. I don't think there's going to be one. I think it's a, a no contest. Knockouts Ultimate X, we got Tasha Steeles, Giselle Shaw, Zaya Brookside, Jody Redhair, Alicia Edwards, and Danny Luna. They did a great social media campaign with this as well. 
grayed out the BQ playbook. But once they put the entire field on one graphic, I was like, I don't know how good this match is going to be. I think there's going to have to be a lot of shenanigans. There's going to be kendo sticks. There might be some, I don't know if it'll be inter- interference. And there, there'll be some interference. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Savannah Evans will probably be lurking around. So there's probably going to be a little bit of bullshit, but um, it is going to be difficult for them to pull off these, this kind of match the way they do the men's. And they had the Lady Frost spot last time, last time that got everyone talking. I don't know if that spot exists here, but I do strongly feel that Giselle Shaw has a has a golden, golden freaking opportunity to shine, to make us forget that she lost damn near every single match last year, or at least it felt like she did. I can't think of, of many she won. And, you know, I think there's more, well, I know there's more to her moveset that she hasn't shown in impact for whatever reason so i think this is this is going to be her match to really to shine there's a strong possibility she wins but i'm gonna go with tasha Steeles as a two-time champion um the other storyline that could happen out of this is that tasha Steeles is going to become the two-time champion and giselle shock and, and wins the match Ultimately, though, I do not think it'll be Giselle Shaw because she had many title matches last year, uh, a couple that were t- totally unnecessary, and she she just took so many L's. She's like um, Anna J in AEW who just wrestled for a fucking title every every three months, and it's just like at some point, you just got to get them out of the title picture. So I don't think Giselle wins, but I think she uh, really, you know, shows off here i've seen zy brookside wrestle in the indies i've never saw her like i think she was in nxt right i never saw any of that work but i did i have seen her and i think she's really good uh not kylan king is in this match i'm befumbled that she's not here she won the you know the uh the willie mack award the one to watch for which is a poison pill you know willie mack bupinder Gujar, it's, it's a poison pill award but at the same time you would think that she would be heavily featured here. And I say this without knowing what the knockouts tag team champions are doing. I think we're going to know later today, but uh, cause this match, this car doesn't look full. It doesn't look complete. So I think we're getting um, them on here. So it, Kylan King could be a part of that. I don't know, but I, I'm really shocked. She's not in this, but I'm going to go with Tasha Steele's winning this thing. Uh, uh, TNA World Tag Team Championship match, ABC versus the Rascals versus Grizzled Young Vets versus Mike Bailey and Seven, Trent Seven. I give fucking two fucks about this match. I hate car crash matches. You know, these tag matches where just a bunch of rehearsed spots. This is not anything I enjoy. I've said that thousands of times. So I'm going to be a little mentally checked out probably during it. But I think ABC wins this thing. I also think they're going to wrestle Grizzled Young Vets and Snake Eyes and lose the titles there. So I, I just know there's a formula that Impact has had over the years. And um, I think the only people to retain will be ABC and Tommy Dreamer. But I think ABC drops the titles on the tapings. X Division Championship, Chris Saban versus Kushida versus El Hijo de Vikingo or Vikingo. Uh, Kushida's going to win this. I'm very confident in saying that. He uh, he's he's signed, which is great. And you know, in the past, we might say, "Well, he doesn't. He can't cut promos. He doesn't speak English. Whatever." Like, think about 2023. How many good storylines did they have? It was. It became a really wrestling centric show with generic storylines or decent storylines a couple good here and there i guess but there really wasn't there really really wasn't and i think they do that because the guy who runs the place josh alexander is a wrestler and they've been unable to put him in an engaging storyline that didn't involve someone taking out his wife so you know it that is a crutch impact used for eddie edwards they use it for brian cage they use it for johnny impact to an extent, Frankie Kazarian, but not really. It's a crutch. Um, they can't use it now because Jade is an on-screen talent. They're not going to take out the ring announcer. 
So because it just became a wrestling centric, you know, you had a wrestling centric champion, wrestling centric face, the, the show just became that way. So um, I got Kushida winning this thing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to see things we've never seen before, but I think Kushida 100% is the X Division champion here. Josh Alexander, speak of the devil versus Stone. I think everyone's really looking forward to this. There's some theories floating around online that they have a great match. Josh wins because Josh will win. I'll tell you that right now. He's, he's wrestling. Uh, what's his fuck? Osprey at Snake Eyes. He's going to beat him. And then it's going to become the road to Josh Alexander in the title picture the entire year. <laughs> but the theories floating around is that they're going to have a great match. And then Scott, there's some some version of this story. Scott comes down and signs him. You know, they sign the contract on Josh's back or something, something like that. And then Hammerstone turns on him. So, you know, not maybe that exact thing but there's there's versions of that kind of floating around that that could happen here i don't see alex hammerstone ending up in one of the bigger companies i just i think this is a really good spot for him he was he was big time in mlw he can really be big time for tna i think it's a it's a perfect spot for him so that's what i think i mean the dude let's put it like this he just composed his own theme music you're not doing that if you're going to freaking like WWE or AEW. <laughs> they they got professionals that really really fucking do that shit. They're not being like, hey, bring your bring your music from GarageBand. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not not to like really knock what he did. I think he did a great job. But um, you know, someone who's like really worked in music and music production, like at the end of the day, you they're not on a national TV program going to put music that wasn't done in a ver with very professional equipment so um even though it just sounds like he's going to be in tna i just i truly think and i think that's the right place for him and it's going to beef up the main event roster or main event picture tna knockouts champion trinity against jordan grace we all know jordan grace is going to win I was steadfast that she was going to turn heel on Trinity, but I now I'm not so sure about it because we know Trinity's leaving now. Trinity's not sticking around for an Impact Plus show, or TNA Plus is that what they call it? Um, so, so I, you know, I can't see just a babyface win here. And then I think she's going to move on to wrestle Kylan King in the near future. I can see that, uh, you know, the TNA Plus show or something like that, the obligatory knockouts title defense that they don't really have to have, but they're going to. So I see it in the short term, her probably defending against Kylan King, and then it's going to move on to whoever debuts at hard to kill. Cause they're going to come into the title picture. I'm sure. So, so Trinity did some really good things for this company. I don't think she's good in the ring. I said that when they signed her, but um, she's, she's a big star. She was a great brand ambassador. You know, and I'll, so I'll miss having her around for those reasons. She did really good things for the company, but this will uh, elevate Jordan a little to beat her. It, you know, beating Deanna Perrazzo is one thing because, you know, they had a storyline where Jordan couldn't beat her and then she beat her, but then everyone did after that. So now we forget. Um, so this, so her winning here will be really good for her. I still smell a heel change, but I, I'm not as um, confident as I once was. I was going to die on that hill a couple months ago because uh, I see her getting involved with Jonathan Gresham on TV. That's kind of where I'm going with it, and he's doing the same. So um, definitely got uh, Grace winning. And then World Championship, Moose versus Alex Shelley. This will be really good because Moose shows out every pay-per-view. Alex Shelley is always good. Moose is going to win here. I've been saying this for months. Before the pandemic, he won a TNA gimmick match. Or he was supposed to win a TNA gimmick match, King of the Mountain, win the TNA title and be the world champion. Pandemic happened. Everything got thrown off. Rich Swan ended up becoming the champion. Now fast forward to 2023, wins a TNA gimmick match. Going to become the TNA world champion. So, 
Um, I'm confident in this. It would be the biggest mistake in the world if Moose lost. Moose is a good heel that we're not out there like cheering. But if he if he lost here, I think the crowd would boo. Because as much as we want to say Alex Shelley is this like legit world champion, he is, but he's not. Like he's still tra- transitional at the end of the day. Even though it's been a longer reign, it was, it, it was a transitional thing to get the belt on Moose. So um, if he were to win here, it, it would be like it would it would <clears throat> excuse me, God, it would be like being a dead horse. It, it would become, you know, there's certain things with a baby face where you just cannot cannot continue with them because it's going to get bland. And that's what would happen here. So I think Moose 100% wins. And I think we're going to have a great show. If you look at this card on paper, it is not amazing. It's not, it doesn't jump out at you like, wow. Well, what's, what's the terminology everyone likes to use? This card is stacked. I don't agree necessarily. But it's but it is a better than average card for what they do. There's a lot of buzz and hype surrounding Hard to Kill right now, which is what we wanted. And for that reason, um, I think it'll be a good show. I'm going to repeat this on my next podcast because I, I really want to hammer it home with people. And I've said it a few times already. We're going to be on a high. TNA is going to TNA wrestling is going to be trending number one tonight. We're going to be on a high after the show. We're going to be on a high after the first couple episodes of snake eyes and will osprey's there and okay what's gonna let us know if it's popping if if it's cracking is that next set of tapings i don't know if it's orlando new orleans i don't really pay attention to locations i know a lot of you do i think it's orlando i could be i could be wrong i don't know what they do with that set of tapings is going to tell us what kind of year we're in store for with TNA wrestling because we're going to act like T- hard to kill was the greatest thing ever. Five out of five, 10 out of 10, whatever you want to say, a plus. And then we're probably going to do the same for snake eyes because it's a, the same environment, same location. Okay. It's and, and you got people who are already there for hard to kill, like or already, you know, grizzly young vets. We don't think they're signing, but they're there. So they're going to do snake eyes, right? It's that next set of tapings. And they'll probably debut some people there too as well. But that's what's going to let us know if it's popping. So let's enjoy Hard Kill. I do got one more podcast coming today. Uh, uh, I guess two because I'm going to react to the Knockouts Tag Team titles, which uh, I guess come out here in an hour and a half or so of me recording this. And then uh, it'll be Hard to Kill tonight. And I'll be reviewing, very likely not tonight since I'll be at the show. It would be hard for me to do it right after, so um, I'm thinking tomorrow. 